Hi reading friends. I am thinking of a friend today who is celebrating her birthday. Someone in my family. I hope you're having a fun birthday. I'm thinking of another friend who is homesick today. I'm sorry that you're homesick, but I hope you enjoy this story. It's called Margaret's Unicorn. I remember reading this book to some friends last year in kindergarten. I'm excited to share it with all of you. Margaret's Unicorn. So I want to show you the title page. It gives a little clue. There's a moving van. Someone is moving to a new home. Here it goes. My whole world changed when I moved to a faraway place, to a cottage in the mountains to be near grandma. Everything smelled different and strange and the house was full of empty spaces. Mm, she had a little bit of a look of wonder on her face. That first afternoon, Dad said, Margaret, why don't you go exploring? By the time you come back, your new room will look just like your old room. I promise. Mom put hot chocolate in a thermos. Be careful not to go further than the big stone, she said. And she gave me a kiss. When I reached the big stone at the end of our garden, I saw the sea spread out before me. A heavy fog was traveling through the sky, and soon the water was covered in mist. No, that wasn't mist, it was clouds. No, they weren't clouds, they were white horses. Not white horses, unicorns. They were leaping in the air, swept by the wind, and then, in a blink, they were gone. Ooh. Something really special to see when you're in a new place. I started to run back to tell mom and dad when I heard a snuffling noise. I tiptoed closer and closer, down a little dip where something silvery lay tangled in the weeds. A baby, I gasped. Carefully, I freed him and then wrapped him in my coat. When I got home, grandma was at the door. She'd come by to help us unpack. I didn't think there were any left, she said. I told her about the herd that had flown past me. When I was a girl, she said, smiling, we would watch the unicorns fly off to Unicorn Island on the last summer wind. Oh, this one didn't make it on the journey. Grandma told me everything she knew about unicorns. They only eat flowers, but there aren't enough to feed them all year round. Every spring, I would wait for them to come back to eat the young, heather and thistles that grow on the mountain. I looked out the cottage window. There were hardly any flowers to be seen. What will we feed him, I asked. Grandma thought for a moment. Let's go, she said. We jumped in the car and headed to town. At a small shop, we bought bunches of flowers for my little unicorn. Ooh, the shop owner looks a little surprised. Would you be surprised to see a unicorn in a store? When we got home, we fed him. What do unicorns drink? I asked Grandma. Water that has been touched by moonlight, she explained. It's what makes their horns glow in the dark, and it's what gives them their magic. I stroked my unicorn's mane, and Grandma and I fished pillows out of the moving boxes to make him a cozy nest near my bed. After Mom and Dad finished unloading the boxes, they came in to find us with my little unicorn. Mom knelt beside him, and he nuzzled her hand. He's well taken care of. That night, Dad and I pulled on our boots and headed out to the hills. As soon as the moon touched the stream, we filled our buckets with the water and carried it home. The water glowed in our dark garage. My unicorn drank as we watched him, amazed. When I went to bed, I let the little unicorn climb in bed with me and I stroked his speckled coat. My unicorn whimpered. I was so excited to have found him. I'd forgotten how scared he must be. It's okay, I whispered. Spring will be back in no time. The unicorn horn is like a little nightlight. The next day, my unicorn and I went for a walk. We crunched through the leaves and caught them as they floated down from the trees. I picked up a horse chestnut 
opened it carefully and touched it soft inside, which felt like a little fairy fur coat. That evening, we watched the stars come out before heading to bed. They seemed so much brighter here than in our old town. Country living. By the time all the trees were bare, my little unicorn had grown comfortable in our cottage. One of our favorite things to do was go to the beach and chase the waves. The white foam looked like unicorns rolling and disappearing into the sandy shore. Then we'd race home with cold fingers and toes and hooves. A fire, I'd tell my unicorn, is the best thing to cozy up to. We'd curl up together and listen to the rain tap, tap, tap on the window. Isn't it the loveliest sound, I'd say? At Christmas, we decorated the tree and our house was filled with the smells of our old home. Hmm, same traditions, new place. When it snowed for the first time, my unicorn was dazzled by it and how quiet everything became. We walked down the road and stomped on the frozen puddles. Together, we made a snow unicorn. Dad broke off an icicle that hung from our roof and gave it a crystal horn. I was missing our old home less and less. Maybe you could make a snow unicorn and get an icicle for the horn. The weather grew warmer and I saw buds appear on the trees and green shoots start to push through the ground. Yellow gorse and dandelion flowers started to bloom in the hills. Soon, I knew my unicorn's family would be back and he would have to leave. When, the, when a unicorn is your friend, you wish, stay, you wish spring would stay far away. Remember, the unicorns will come back from Unicorn Island because there will be enough flowers to eat in the spring. On the first day of spring, as we sat on the hill, the unicorns floated down from the sky like snowflakes. So beautiful. Slowly, one of them, with chocolate brown eyes and a soft pink nose, drew close. My unicorn skipped toward her and leaned against her white coat. He nuzzled her cheek, and I knew this must be his mother. It was time to say goodbye to my unicorn. Please don't forget me, I whispered into her silky ear as I hugged him tightly. What a special friend she had. Now spring has come and gone and the days have grown longer. I've made some new friends, but I still miss my unicorn. One day we went walking over the hills, mom, dad, grandma, and my friend Abby and me. As Abby and I were searching for bugs in the tall grass, something nudged my arm. I turned in surprise. I plucked a sprig of heather from its stem and held out my palm. Cautiously, my unicorn ate it. Oops, I missed this part. It was my unicorn. He had grown and was taller and wild and beautiful. I gave him the sprig of heather and watched him. He watched me with his dark eyes. His ears flicked back and forth, listening to all around him. I wanted to reach out and touch him. I like that she's being cautious, even though they know each other. He took one more flower, and then he must have heard something, or maybe I moved too quickly, because he turned and galloped away in an instant. I scrambled a few paces after him and watched him disappear, and he was gone. It looks like her friend got to see too. I turned to Abby, who looked on in amazement. That was an old friend, I said. Mom called out. It was time to head home, through the heather and the thistles, to our cottage on the mountain. You know what this says? The end. Isn't that the sweetest little story about Margaret's unicorn? I love it. It's such a special story. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back to hear more stories. Readers, I'll see you soon.